Good evening, it's Dr. Jen Kordonsky from Optimal Spine Chiropractic, and tonight's class is Balance and Flexibility. Um, usually when we teach this class in the office, I have everyone read an article about the sitting rising test uh, before we start the class, because it's really interesting. There was a Brazilian doctor that um, designed this test called the sitting rising test, and what it is, it, an individual stands on a comfortable surface, comfortable clothes, barefoot, and they have to take themselves from standing, lower themselves down to seated, and then get back up again to standing. And there's a point system. So going down um, and coming up, five points each, and the doctor will score you based on whether or not you lose balance. Um, that's a loss of a 0.5. Uh, point you can lose a full point if you have to use your hand or your leg or so on um, You can look up the test or you can ask us to send you the article But the really interesting thing is that the doctor found that this test the lower your score Correlated to an increased risk of death within the six years following the test and he, he did the test with everyone from athletes to seniors um, and when I first came across this study, I found it really fascinating and understood that it was a test of strength, uh, balance, flexibility, um, and that, of course, the lower your score, the lower you were in all of those categories, um, that you would be at increased risk for falls. Um, but it wasn't showing that this was deaths from falls. Um, it was deaths from all causes. So the lower the person's score, um, the higher the risk of, of their, their death. So what does that mean? Why does that make sense? Um, and it's not that it's the, like I said, it's not the falls, fall risk, that it's the person's longevity is affected. So what was it? And thinking as a chiropractor, it really made sense. And it goes back to a, a basic premise of anatomy and physiology. Uh, you've probably taken a biology course at some point where you've heard the word structure determines function. And, you know, we use that in science and biology to see, well, you know, if this um, organism has this structure, well, its function is most likely this. Uh, structure determines function. And that's very true in the human body. And we have to extrapolate that and understand that structural integrity determines function. That if the structure is deteriorating, if we're losing the fundamentals of the structure, that's gonna correlate to a loss of function. And it's not just loss of function in that muscle or in that joint, it's overall for the whole organism because our structural integrity and our functional integrity about everything about us, our physical health, how our organs are functioning, our mental health, our emotional state, even our, our mental acuity are all going to be impacted when structure is deteriorating, function is also deteriorating. Um, so there's obviously strong correlation as well to the spine, which is what intrigued me so much about the study. The, the test itself, the sitting rising test, is directly uh, looking at the strength of the legs. It's directly looking at the flexibility of the hips and ankles. Um, but if those joints and those muscles are affected, we're almost certainly going to have similar uh, deterioration or loss of function in the spine. And if you've been around me for very long, you understand that any loss of spinal health is going to translate to uh, less than optimal function in the body. So this is why someone who's not as strong and not as flexible as they should be is going to have a greater risk of death from all causes because their body, their health, their internal organs are not functioning as well as they could because of this loss of structural integrity that's directly affecting the spine. And when we affect the spine, we affect everything. So I want to point out that our lives today, the way we use our bodies, is very different from our original design. We don't have that much variety in how we use our bodies, how we go through our day. Um, we don't move as often and as much as we should. Um, we don't have the 
like I said, variety of, you know, occasionally we're doing this task or that task, we tend to have, even if we have physically active jobs, we tend to have similar movements over and over. Even our job as chiropractors, where we're working on patients, we get to be up and active and on our feet all day, uh, tend to be the same type of movements. I lean over the table in the same direction, I adjust in a similar direction, um, and, and think about it. Every part of you is use it or lose it. If I only ever use my shoulder in this range of motion, and I'm not taking it through its full and varied range of motion, I'm going to lose that capacity. Everything about your body is use it or lose it. Your balance, your flexibility, and strength tend to, unfortunately, very quietly slip away because we're not using them. And sadly, Sometimes our first realization as humans that we have lost strength or balance or flexibility is when we find ourselves in a situation where we can no longer do something that is, is, is necessary in life. Um, we can no longer reach items on the high shelf because our shoulder doesn't go that way. God forbid we have a fall and we realize we don't have the strength to get ourselves up off the floor. And sadly, that happens more than you realize that we had no idea, that a person had no idea that things were, were that bad until they got to a situation where they've lost function um, because it quietly slips away. When we're not using it, we're losing it. So we need to assess. We need to know where we are with our strength, our balance, our flexibility, basically our structural integrity of our body. If you want to have the most vital life that you can have, if you want to enjoy your potential in your relationships, in your job, the way you use your mind and your body, if you want their max potential expressed, then we have to care for the structure. So we have to know where we are. So we're gonna do a little self-assessing. You can do the sitting rising test in the privacy of your own home, but it's really hard. Um, so I have for us some simpler flexibility, balance, and strength tests. And if you'd like to get a copy of this, you just let us know and we'll get it to you. Um, I'm going to try to demonstrate to the best of my ability. Um, I tried to set up the camera so you'll be able to see me. Um, but if you have any questions, just let me know. But I think you'll be able to get the gist um, from what you can see. So with flexibility testing, we want to be able to see if we can touch our finger fingertips behind our back. And what I mean by that is going like this. One up, one down, and then reversing and checking the other side. Can I touch my fingertips on both sides? That's gonna really assess your shoulder range of motion. Um, we wanna know if you're gonna be able to touch your toes, right? And that's a basic one. The next one is, can you cross your legs in what I call the figure four position? So if you're sitting down and you cross your legs like this in the figure four, so you're gonna lose me when I sit, but you want to be able to cross like this and let the knee drop down and be able to sit upright. If you're like this, there's obviously a loss of flexibility in the hip, in the spine, in the leg muscles. So that's something that, that will need to be worked on. And you want to be able to do it on both sides. The next flexibility question is, can you perform a squat? So it's really hard, I wish I could demonstrate it better, but a great squat, the hips go back and the knees stay over the heel, or over the ankle, excuse me. And we have a nice 90 degree angle at the heels. So a good healthy squat form, you can just Google it and look at how the spine stays neutral, the knees stay over the heels, or excuse me, over the ankles. So that's one thing. And the last thing is a deep squat. So most people use their hips in a way where they uh, walk, right? We all do a good, a decent amount of walking, hopefully a lot, um, and we sit down, right? We sit down more than we should, but stand up, sit down, and walk only use the hips in a limited range of motion. This is a ball and socket joint. It has a wide range of motion. That leg should be able to go all the way around smoothly in both directions and go into maximal flexion. But when's the last time you ever did a deep squat where we challenged the flexibility of the hip in that fashion? So that's another way to test and assess 
Where am I? How much of my natural range of motion have I lost? If you give these tests to your kids, they should be able to pass with flying colors. It's not okay that just because you're not a kid that you have lost some of that. It's common, but it's not normal, and there's a huge difference there. Um, if we want to be and do and have more than, than average, and if we look at what the health of, of our country looks like, you should absolutely want to be better than average. So we have to do things a little bit differently. So we can't just say, oh, well, I'm this age. You know, that's what I can do. Uh, we have to challenge ourselves for more. So our balance tests, we have four of them. And the first one, very simply, standing on one leg. You should be able to do that for at least 30 seconds each leg, ideally a minute. Um, test number two is a measure of strength and balance. It's the chair sit to stand. So in this test, you sit in a chair, upright, good posture, and then without using your arms on any armrests or, or on your legs at all, so no hands, stand up, sit down, stand up, sit down. Uh, you should be able to do that five complete times within 13 seconds or less. Not holding on, not pushing on your legs, um, and, and that rapidly. That's a measure of the strength in your legs and also your balance and ability to uh, control and coordinate your body's movements without just dropping down. Next, we have our standing reach test. So for this one, you need a wall. And you're gonna stand up against the wall and you reach out just like this. Just the natural length of your arm, that's your starting point. So you can mark that on the wall or you can use the edge of something as your indicator. And then what you're gonna do is lean forward as far as you can, do not move your feet, and you should be able to lean forward. Your fingertips should go six inches past your starting point. And I usually demonstrate this by putting two post-it notes on the wall, three inch post-it notes, two of them together is six inches. So you could just see if I start at the one edge, can I make it past the outer edge? If so, and you haven't lost your balance and you haven't needed to step forward to catch yourself, um, then that is a pass. Next, we have the dynamic balance test. So there's four parts to this one. In this test, you want to be able to um, complete all four parts without touching down. Ideally, you'll be able to go from position one to position two to position three to position four without losing your balance and without having to put your foot down. So you're just ga gauging where you're at. So position one is foot out in front of you. So you extend your leg out in front and hold it ideally five seconds. Position two is extending your leg out to the side. I didn't put my foot down in between, I just went from the front to the side. Position three is extending it back. And then position four is coming right up to bringing your knee up as high as you can. And again, in an ideal world, a pass, an A plus on that test is that you can go from position one, two, three, four, without touching, without losing your balance. If you do, just make a note of it because it doesn't matter where you are, it only matters what direction you're heading in. So wherever you, if you pass this test, if you rock it with flying colors and you're like, this is easy, and you don't do anything to protect, build, and maintain what you have, then you're heading in the wrong direction, right? You're going to lose what you have because your body is use it or lose it. So doesn't matter where you are. And you're gonna do both sides on that. Now for a strength test, the only thing that's um, easily done and easily measured, um, I think is a standard push-up, a standard traditional push-up. And I have a little range here. You should be able to do at least 19 push-ups. That is a goal. Um, and it varies depending upon male, female, um, body type. It's, it's just one way of assessing. Uh, but you should record where you are at. Now a challenge level, if you go through all of these tests, the flexibility, excuse me, all the balance tests, and you're like, I've got this, no problem. Do them all eyes closed. And then you'll see a whole nother level, a whole area of room for improvement. Um, so those are the tests. And as I said, it really doesn't matter to me whether or not you fail these tests or you get everything, you can do it all, eyes closed, 
and you're a rock star on it. It really only matters to me and to you what direction you're heading in. Wherever you are, if you want to express your best potential in your life and maintain the relationships and be there for your family and be able to enjoy all of your, your life's activities, you have to protect the structure of your body. If you are not going out of your way to build it and maintain it, then you're losing it. And it's a common misconception that we think, well, you know, I don't, I don't need to be strong to do that. Well, you have to ask yourself, what kind of quality of life do you want to enjoy? Do you want to be unable to lift yourself up out of a chair, um, to struggle to get on and off the toilet, to be afraid that if you were to fall, that you wouldn't be able to help yourself up? So it's that important. And we can't just say, oh, no big deal. Go out of your way. And not only will you preserve and protect and maintain, um, but I challenge you to say, you know what, I'm gonna build my structural integrity. Because just as much as losing it, you know, when structure deteriorates, function deteriorates. If you improve structure, function improves too. The healthier your spine is, the healthier all of your internal organs are. When you have a strong, movable, flexible body, do you realize what an impact that actually has on your brain? Your mental capacity, your mental function needs and necessitates uh, movement of the joints, especially the spinal joints, to refresh cerebrospinal fluid and keep you running on all cylinders. So every aspect of your life will benefit from having balance, strength, and flexibility, basically structural integrity of your body. So, needs to be worked on. It needs to be something that you put high on your priority list. Um, this is the one body that you get, and you have to make sure that you're caring for it, so it's gotta go on the to-do list. Uh, number one is maintaining your spinal health and your body alignment. Obviously, you know, if you're way out of alignment, uh, your, your body weight is being carried more on one side of your body, and that's wearing down a hip joint, even if you don't feel it, it's going to cost you later on, right? So spinal health, body alignment is a lifetime responsibility. Young to old, it's something that has to be uh, on the priority list and um, the benefits are tremendous. Number two is the strength and the flexibility of your muscles. So I know it's not news to you that exercise is important. Um, we have to go one step above and say, am I getting a variety of exercises? You know, you might be going to the gym uh, or walking and that's good, it's better than doing nothing. Um, but if we're doing the same thing all the time, then our bodies are not getting the maximum benefit. So variability in our movements, variability in the type of exercise that we choose. Um, if you think about going to the gym, especially if you use machines at the gym, uh, which makes strength training a little safer, a little easier, um, a little bit more comfortable. So you go and you sit in the machine and maybe I'm doing a bicep curl. And what happens is in the machine, I'm isolating that movement and just really my bicep is working at that time. I'm seated, if your posture's good, you know, ideal, you're just isolating the movement at the one joint and using one primary muscle. Well, that's not how you use your body in real life. It could be a useful tool for strengthening that muscle, but think of how dynamic you use your, how dynamically you use your body in real life. You know, you bend over and you reach for things and you pick up that bag of groceries from over here and you lift things up over onto the shelf. Um, so you have to build strength um, flexibility in the muscles and the joints and I think that the easiest way to do that is through dynamic body weight type exercise so what I mean by that is um, not just one plane of motion so dynamic uh, maybe I am you know taking a dumbbell and I'm doing a side squat and I'm bringing it back and an overhead press you know um, it's combining movements and um, we're using the joints in a fuller range of motion and we're getting 
the core involved. We're getting multiple muscle groups working at once. This is, I think, the most efficient way to exercise, and it's also the way you really need strength in your body. You need the upper and lower halves to work together. Uh, my favorite way to do this is to use um, a website called hasfit.com. I love their workouts. Um, you can do them with weights, without weights. They have some for seniors, some for just mobility and flexibility. Um, but I just find there's a really nice range of different types of dynamic body weight or dumbbell uh, exercises that kind of tick all the boxes. The other really great way to tick all the boxes is through yoga. Um, yoga incorporates strength, balance, and flexibility like no other form of exercise that I really could, could think of. Um, so mixing a little of that into your, your ways of moving your body is an absolutely wonderful idea. Um, every muscle in your body, including the heart, the vascular system, um, needs to be strong and flexible. So our workouts have to be um, a little bit challenging. You know, if it's not a little tough, then maybe you're maintaining, but you're not growing your strength. Um, the stress of exercise, where it feels hard, um, that's where you're getting the improvements. That's where you're getting the gains. Um, so challenge yourself to go a little bit above and beyond. It doesn't have to be a killer workout um, where you just you can't walk the next day, um, but there should be some challenge to what you're doing, um, and it should be strength cardiovascular, you know, get that heart rate up, get those lungs working. Um, if it's feeling more challenging to breathe, you know, you don't have to do the whole workout at that level, but guess what? Your respiratory system has to get stronger in order to cope with that challenge that you're putting on it. Stretching has to be part of what you do. Um, I like to incorporate flexibility as part of the workout. Um, that way it doesn't feel as boring, like, oh, I have to sit and do my stretching now but definitely a little bit of cool, uh, warm, warm up, cool down, uh, stretching, and those full ranges of motion in the workout, and you're working on staying flexible. Um, let me see on my notes here. Oh, if you're a very beginner, and you're just starting to say, okay, I need to do this, I need to get uh, moving, and I need to start adding exercise, um, where I would say to start, and I have some specific, um, if, if you don't want to use the HasFit website, um, I have some little workout sheets that I can give you if we're looking for just real basic beginner or senior stuff. Um, but walking is a great place to start because you can vary your intensity on that. You can go just a short distance, nice and easy, or you can start to pick up the pace. Um, you can do intervals with that. And then the two exercises I would say are must-dos uh, would be push-ups. And if, if getting down on the ground to do a push-up too much of a challenge, wall push-ups work. So you just come out at an angle and you do your push-up like this. As you get stronger, the further away from the wall you go or the lower the surface, the more intense. So you can do them on the countertop if you're getting a little bit stronger. And then who knows, before you know it, you may actually be down on the ground doing a traditional push-up. But you can start right up on the wall and start bringing that strength uh, training back into your upper body. And then the chair sit. So all of those flexibility and balance tests can actually be a way for you to start working on your flexibility and your balance. You can use that test sheet that, that we'll give you. You can use that as a way to assess yourself periodically, or you could use that as actually a workout that you do, that you go through and you check the ranges of motion and you check the balance and that in and of itself can start moving you in the right direction. The third and final thing that we need to do specifically and go out of our way is do things that challenge your balance. So if we are not ever, well, let me tell you first that your balance is a function of the strength of your muscles, but mainly of the uh, coordination of your nerve system. So as I'm walking along, my brain is assessing where my body is in space. And if I start to feel my foot slip or I notice that the ground is uneven under my foot, my, that, I'm noticing that through the nerve endings in my foot, in my joints of my body, 
right? And that information is going from those nerve endings to my brain, and my brain is saying, okay, starting to slip this way, need to contract that muscle and pull back this way, I need to contract this over here, that over there, and bring you back into balance. If you had to think about it, it, it would take way too long. It's reflexive and it's through your nerve system. Um, so your brain is sending, or the nerves are sending the information to your brain, your brain is sending the information to the muscles and joints, and you are adapting, and it should be happening like that. Now, obviously, subluxations that are creating interference in the nerve system could slow down or block or inhibit those messages from coming through clearly. So another reason why you want your spine to be super healthy is so that your balance and coordination has its absolute, or you have your best ability to be balanced and coordinated. Preventing falls is just one of the, the benefits. Um, but if we're not doing things that challenge our balance, we're only ever walking on a flat surface, um, we're, we're just not experiencing the dynamic movements that are possible, um, then we're going to lose that ability. One thing that happens, especially if the spinal alignment is suffering, structure is suffering, uh, we're starting to lose that um, speedy signal, your body starts relying, or your brain starts relying on your eyes to tell you what's happening around you. Starts relying on your vision to see that next step instead of anticipating it and feeling it um, through proprioception, which is through the nerve system. Um, so one of the things that you can do to challenge your balance um, in a safe way is to do things that um, you're comfortable and confident doing, but now do them with your eyes closed. If you're doing an exercise and you've mastered the movement um, and you feel comfortable, go ahead and try closing your eyes and see how much more challenging it becomes to do that same movement. Um, you can do it while you're brushing your teeth, washing the dishes. Um, but just taking out that visual component of your balance, your body has to depend more on the proprioceptive input through the nerve system, and it will improve your balance. Um, work, working out or walking on varied surfaces, you know, on a rocky area, on a sandy area, on grassy area, um, that challenges your proprioceptive uh, nerve system coordination of your balance. Go hiking, go climbing, uh, walk on the rocks, um, just do different things than you would in your everyday experience. It's so good for your brain and your body. Um, if you find that you've really lost balance and you've either had falls or you realize, you know, I can't even do the, the reach test without losing my balance, then this is a situation where it really needs to be rehabilitated. And with all of these things, your spinal health, your muscular health, um, and your balance ability, there's different categories. There's, okay, I'm just going to maintain what I've got because things are pretty good and I need to do what needs to be done, you know, getting adjusted regularly, exercise regularly, challenge my balance here and there, and I'm maintaining. And then we have to say, all right, am I in a situation where I need to repair? that there's been damage or loss of either my spinal health um, and I have to be doing corrective care for a short time? Have I lost strength so much so that I need to be you know, rebuilding? Have I lost balance so much that I need to rebuild? Um, so we have to know that by testing. And if that's the case, then I strongly recommend that you consider physical therapy, balance training, um, because that is, you know, hands-on. You've got somebody guiding you through the process of restoring what's been lost. You know, if it's just a maintenance situation, um, if you're, if you've been, like, if it's moderate loss of balance, there's a way that you can, you know, retrain yourself. Um, what we have you do is go through like a two-week program of doing daily march in place. So that's step one and then marching in place with your eyes closed, and then doing one-legged standing, obviously in a safe place where you have something to hold on to. And then after two weeks of each of those phases, then you get to the point where you do a leg lift and we say, you know, draw a square in the air with your knee and do both sides. Um, if you need help with that, please ask us and let us know. But 
The point being is that you have to do something to maintain. Our bodies are use it or lose it. So you've got to be using it, otherwise it's going and it could be slipping away without you knowing. The structural integrity of your body is so crucial to your well-being and your ability to live your life, express your potential uh, for as long as you're here. And my challenge to you is to say, I don't want to just maintain it. My challenge to you is to say, I want to go a little step above and I actually want to build the health of my body, take care of my structural integrity, and I'm going to challenge myself. And in what way are you going to do it? And we'd love to hear feedback. We'd love to hear you comment on something that you're going to do to raise the bar a little bit. You know, maybe you're already working out and now you're going to incorporate um, barefoot training or working on an unstable surface like a BOSU ball. Uh, maybe it's that you aren't doing anything uh, for your exercise requirements and you're going to start with walking. Um, whatever it is, share with us how you're going to challenge yourself. Um, share with us if you need help and you would like a little more guidance. Let us know if you would like the uh, test sheet so you can do the balance and flexibility tests. And my last challenge to you is to think about who else in your life you hope to see live their best, most vibrant, longest life and share this video with them pass on the message um, and maybe you'll gain a partner in accountability. So have a great night and we look forward to teaching our next class next week.